Good morning. I'm so excited because I get to talk about my two favorite things. I get to talk about the V8 JavaScript engine and Node.js. My, sorry. My name is Franziska Hinkelmann. I'm a software engineer on Google's V8 team, and I'm also on the TSC, the Node Technical Steering Committee. And I want to show you a little bit what we, the V8 team, have been doing for the last 18 months to better support Node and therefore all of you Node developers. So what, what is Node? It's awesome. Um, I hope you thought that's funny because that's the only joke you get to hear for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> this is all pretty serious. So joking aside, what is Node.js? Well, Node.js consists of a JavaScript runtime. There needs to be something that runs JavaScript, parsing, compiling, and running JavaScript. And a node that is V8, the engine that's also used in Chrome. Um, another very important part of Node.js is a synchronous I.O. based on event loops. In Node, we use libuv for that. Then there's about 100,000 lines of code, JavaScript and C++. They are basically the glue between libuv and v8, and we also need to implement all the modules that you get with Node that you don't explicitly need to download. And I just said it, all the modules, a big part of Node is also the ecosystem of the packages. And since I'm on the v8 team, I'm gonna focus on the v8 engine, the JavaScript runtime part. Um, so first of all, some terminology. Depending on the context, we refer to V8 as the JavaScript runtime, a JavaScript engine, a compiler, or a virtual machine, VM. But all these words basically mean the same thing. We're always talking about a JavaScript engine. Um, V8 is the engine that's used in Chrome. And uh, very, very briefly, because we don't have a lot of time, but I just want to go a little bit into some of the very abstract in the optimizations that V8 is doing. So V8 is a just-in-time compiler. That means we compile just in time as we need to run the code. So we compile a little bit, we run it. We compile a little bit, and we run that. So we alternate all the time between running and compiling. Now, why would we do that? Why wouldn't we just compile everything and then run it? Well, the advantage if you alternate between compiling and running is you can collect information while you run the code and then use this runtime information to compile better code the next time around. So we compile, we run, we collect data, and then we speculate with this data what's going to happen in the future, and that affects how we next compile the code. So we apply these speculative optimizations, and that's the big part that gives you a massive speed up in JavaScript. And I keep saying we, this is not unique to V8, this is actually a concept in all the modern JavaScript engines. Um, here's a little bit what's happening under the hood. So you have JavaScript source code. At first, the parser parses that and generates an abstract syntax tree. Then Ignition, that is our interpreter, consumes the abstract syntax tree and generates bytecode from that. So we run that bytecode. And I said, as we run it, we collect runtime information and we recompile. So if we run the code and we detect that some functions are hot, that we're running them all the time, then we pass on these functions to our optimizing compiler TurboFan. And this compiler now uses some other information that we already gathered at runtime and compiles the functions to even faster machine code. And I said we're making these speculative optimizations. We speculate what we're going to happen, and the optimizing compiler uses those speculations. And if we fail with those, it's not a big deal. We just go back to the slightly slower bytecode. So it's not wrong, it's just a little slower if our speculations turn out to not be true. Um, Little more background, V8 is written in C++. It implements JavaScript according to the ECMAScript specification. Every time there are additions to ECMAScript, we add them to, to V8 so that you can 
use the new JavaScript features in Chrome and in Node.js. Um, in JavaScript, you don't have to worry about memory management. It's a garbage collected garbage collected language. So that is part of V8. And also, more recently, WebAssembly is part of V8. What is not part of V8 is, for example, the DOM, the document object model. That is responsibility of the browser to implement that. Or the console. The console is not a JavaScript object defined in the ECMAScript standard. That's something the embedder, so Chrome or Node in that case, are responsible for providing. And also, V8 does not have any notion of file system access. So in Node, we use libuv for that. The, the majority of the V8 team sits in Munich, so I hope I don't sound too jet lagged because it was a pretty long flight. Um, two of my coworkers are here as well. Peter is going to talk later today about high performance JavaScript, and Yang will talk tomorrow about some cool things in the debugger. So we have been working on things like code coverage or type profile, but he'll tell you all about that tomorrow. Um, we are around the conference. Please come find us if you want to talk more about V8. So after telling you how much I like V8 and that it has a really cool technology to speed up JavaScript, I have to admit, if you embed V8, it's maybe not all that much fun. So in fact, sometimes for Node, it was really painful to update V8. And that comes from the fact that, at least in the past, V8 has exclusively focused on Chrome. We are part of the Chrome organization. Um, everything that we worked on in the past was to make sure that Chrome has the best performance and that everything works best. So uh, one thing that easily follows from that is, is we have the same release schedule at Chrome. We release every six weeks. Um, and another thing is that any changes to the V8 API, we would make them whenever and however they were good for us and for Chrome. And the, the API is the part that an embedder, so Node.js, for example, would use to communicate with V8. And the API is not part of the ECMAScript specification. That's an implementation detail. So as an embedder, Unless you are Chrome, you never had a guarantee that nothing would change or that we would not deprecate any function calls that you were relying on. So, yeah, so the setup that we were focusing on Chrome made it really hard for Node sometimes to keep V8 up to date. But um, we have realized that Node is really important. And as you saw in Mark's keynote, I mean, the numbers are just massive. 8 million instances a week. Like, I don't even know the number for modules. Um, so we figured out it's actually, it's our responsibility to make sure that we support Node just as well as we support Chrome. Um, and this is kind of obvious, but I want to point it out anyways. First of all, communication already helps a lot. Um, we are talking a lot more to the Node people. Um, I'm on the Node TSC. We're hanging out a lot on the issue tracker. We have other channels of communication. And just talking about what our plans are and what some problems are, and then figuring out a solution that works for both of us, that's already very helpful. But there's a lot more. And I want to show you some of the examples of what we actually did that was just for Node.js. So you might have seen that Node 8, Node 8, which is going LTS at the end of this month, um, we, we, the Node TSC, had decided that we would delay the release a little bit. And the reason for that was actually V8. And so what happened there is V8 got a completely new compiler pipeline earlier this year. So our previous compiler pipeline uh, called full code gen and crankshaft got replaced by Ignition and Turbofan, the interpreter and the optimizing compiler. Um, and we made the switch, I think, around Christmas. Now, when Node 8 was supposed to be cut, the V8 version that would have gone into that 
was the very last V8 version that was still using the old compiler. And at first we thought, well, that's a really good idea because we have years of experience with the old compiler. So if we put that in node 8, which is LTS, there won't be any big surprises for the users because we've already handled crankshaft on full code gen in previous releases. But then we realized, well, wait a second. Node 8 is LTS, so that means it'll be around for two and a half or three more years to give you some stability that you can count on. And if we put in that V8 version with the old compiler pipeline, um, we will not be able to backport any fixes that V8 does in the next three years. Because V8 doesn't even have the code anymore that is needed for the old compiler pipeline. And if, if we make any fixes, they will not be able to be backported to Node that is using that old V8 version. So we decided we would delay the release a little bit, but then we have another problem. So now we have an LTS version that gets the very first release with the new compiler pipeline. And that is still very rough on the edges because it was the first time that we used it. So that's not really a good, uh, a good solution. The other problem though is if we use the slightly newer release of V8, there were two more coming before Node goes LTS, um, we, we're not giving any time for testing and for module authors to make this work with Node 8. So what the V8 team did is we, um, we generated a patch that would guarantee ABI stability. So that's the application binary interface that's even a little stricter than the a AP compatibility. So we made that patch and that actually allowed Node to use the Newer V8 um, have people compile against that binary and then upgrade V8 behind the scenes without switching the, the binary interface. Um, and the V8 team also committed to fixing several of the performance regressions that came when we first updated to the new compiler pipeline, and we made sure all of that works well in Node. Um, so has anybody played around with Node 8 yet? You like it? Is it faster? Well, so the reports we've gotten is that it's not worse. Uh, some, some code that people are under really happy because it's a lot, lot faster. Um, and so that's one of the things that's only possible now because V8 is, is willing to help Node and not be like, well, we work for Chrome, you do whatever. Okay. So another thing that we did is an integration bot for Node V8. So we integrate the newest V8 into Node to make sure it still builds, we don't break any tests. A um, big shout out here to Michael, who does not work for us, but um, he is maintaining the Node V8 Canary version. So if you're super, super experimental and Node Master is not bleeding edge enough for you, you can use those binaries. They are Node Master combined with V8 Master. So it's way newer than anything that you will see in Node for another few months. Um, there was a hash flooding vulnerability in Node. It wasn't an issue for Chrome, but we went ahead and fixed that because otherwise Node would have to turn off the V8 snapshot and would have been a performance regression. So some more work, Young did that. And we've made API changes just for Node. Um, some of them we did, but we also have Node collaborators. For example, Anna did a lot of changes to garbage collection functions so that they're easier or better to use by Node.js. Anybody here debugging Node a lot? Node debugging? So we're about to deprecate the old debugger. And for, I think since Node 7, you can use the V8 inspector or the Chrome DevTools protocol in Node now. Um, and that was actually a lot of work for us because it used to be that the inspector code lived outside of V8. It, it was part of Chrome but not of V8. Now, Node only embeds V8, it doesn't embed Chrome, so it doesn't have access to the inspector. So we first removed all the, the, it, the, all the dependencies that the inspector had on Chrome things and then moved it over to V8. 
So now when you get V8, you can use the inspector and nicely debug your node applications. So I hope I was giving you a little bit of an overview that we are doing a bunch of things. This has started 18 months ago um, because we want to support Node better. And I'm proud to say that Node is a first class citizen in V8 now. So in fact, you cannot land a single patch in V8 if it breaks Node, if Node doesn't build or if it breaks any tests. Mm. And so this is sort of the status quo. What, what I'm hoping for that we'll do a lot more in the future that in addition to Node breaking, we'll also have a similar strict policy for performance regressions. So we have some benchmarks, but we, we do need to create better benchmarks and monitor them more strictly. Right now, that's mostly me being like, oh, could you maybe revert because it's not so great? But um, I think in the future, we will be a lot stricter on that. OK, so much about VM, uh, about V8, but there's, there's more. And I'm happy to see that there's a push in the community for VM diversity. So diversity of virtual machines. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, we mean it should be possible to have Node.js with any JavaScript engine. There's no reason that the JavaScript runtime that Node.js needs, that that's the Google <coughs> JavaScript runtime. And in fact, you can get Node.js on Chakra Core. Microsoft has put a lot of effort into making uh, Node run on Chakra Core. And if you get that, it looks and feels like a regular Node.js, but under the hood, the JavaScript engine is Chakra Core, um, the same that you have in Edge. And so if you use this node, you can, for example, use different debugging features. Now, you might wonder, why do I say that I'm happy that we are, we're working on VM diversity? Because it might seem a little counterintuitive. I work for Google. Our engine is a node. Why would I want to share this space? Well, it's really not counterintuitive. Um, I believe you get a much better product, in this case, node, if you have competition. And we've seen this a few years ago with browsers. If we only had one browser, we would never have the, the JavaScript performance that we have now. And only competition helps us to set realistic goals, what we can improve, and give us a reason to improve on that. So VM diversity is a good thing. Um, one thing that's a little hard technically about switching out the engines is native add-ons have to be recompiled, or they used to have to be recompiled if you switch the engine version. But as of node 8.6, which just came out, the NRP is not behind an experimental flag anymore. So we have a special RP now, the, the node RP for native add-ons, that allows you to compile your native, native add-ons once, and you don't need to recompile them if you update the engine or even completely switch it out. And Michael and Arunesh will talk about this later today. They'll definitely be there because this is really interesting stuff. So in the future, I hope, or I foresee, that we'll have better node JSs. This should really be plural. Um, because we will have better VMs, and we will keep up the good communication that we have with the node community. If you have any questions, be happy to talk to you. Come find me. I also have stickers. Thank you very much.